Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. I am trying to do a little bit better in my presentations on my videos. Have a different background set up. I'm not sure I really like the camo, but I mean, it is a gun channel and what goes better with guns than camouflage. So tonight, what I wanted to talk about is something that has really been weighing heavily on me. So the last few times I've gone out ammo shopping, I have been able to find some 410 shot shells. I have completely avoided buying 20 gauge and 12 gauge for the last month or so, specifically because the prices have gone up so much. What used to cost me $21 for 100 rounds, which is 21 cents a round for either 12 or 20 gauge shot shells, whether it was Winchester Universal or Federal Target Loads, now is between 30, 31, 32 dollars. For 100 rounds all the way up to 40 and even a little bit higher than that so that's now what was about five dollars and sixty cents a box is now ten dollars a box what was 21 dollars for 100 rounds is now 40 and a little bit up from there um 410 the last two times i've seen 410 shot shells uh my online supplier had some for 25 dollars for 25 rounds which is a buck a round for 410 and another local shop up the street from me had $35 for 25 rounds of 410 shot shells for regular hunting loads, two and a half inch shell, half ounce target loads. That is absolutely outrageous. I finally got to a point where I'm doing something that I should have done two years ago. And you know, the saying goes, the best time to do something is when you realize there's a problem, which would have been two years ago. The second best time to do something is right now when I can still make a change. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Well, from the introduction, maybe some of you might have guessed it. What I'm talking about is I'm finally getting into reloading shot shells. Now, the sad thing about this is about five or six years ago, I was given a Mech 600 Junior uh, single stage press already set up for 12 gauge. Um, I had a bunch of powder. I had a bunch of shot. I had a bunch of wads. And at the time, I had absolutely no interest in reloading. This is back when, again, shot shells were about 20 cents a round, sometimes a little bit better than that, 20 to 21 cents a round. Really wasn't concerning me whatsoever. Now the cost of shot shells are between 40 and 50 and sometimes upwards of a dollar or a dollar 10, a dollar 20 per round, depending on what you're shooting. Even for target loads, I decided it is finally time to get into reloading. So what I have laid out here is what I've been able to pick up just this week alone. Uh, I started looking into this, uh, I think, Monday or Tuesday this week. And between Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday this week, I've been able to pick all this stuff up. So what I have on the left, this is a Lyman Pocket Touch 1500 electronic scale. It comes with a check weight, which is just your uh, reference. It comes with a little powder pan. And it comes with a little powder measure so you can actually scoop the powder out dump it into the pan and then dump that right into your shell obviously a little scale it's digital so should be pretty accurate i have some 410 shot shell wads which is a claybuster waa 10 hs or sp 410 or 410 sc or waa 41 replacement wads that was just what was available. Cabela's had those in stock, $15 for 500. That's a pretty good deal. Then next to that over here, I have some 12 gauge clay buster replacement wads, which is a TGT 12 or CB 8100-12, 12 gauge optimized for a one inch load. Next to that over here, I have some Winchester 296 ball powder, which, is only good for loading 357 um, Magnum and things like that, but it's also made for 410 shot shells. So you can see that here, 410 bore shot shells. This is the only shotgun powder I found anywhere. I called three or four different shops. I tried to order some powder online. Um, big surprise, they don't ship to my state. I think there's one place locally that will ship to my state um, but their prices are twice what everybody else's are. So I'm not going to spend double on powder. I'm going to wait until my local shops have it in stock. I'll keep calling them. And then over here, I have a thousand primers. These are shotgun primers, number 209. 
Again, it was another one of those. I just happened to catch it at the right time when a local shop just got in a pallet of number 209 primers. Those are Noble Sport. I have heard sometimes that the Noble Sport primers are a tiny bit bigger than a standard Winchester 209 or Federal 209. Um, but I'm going to give them a try. You know, people say if they're oversized, basically you'll stretch your shell out. And you'll have to only reload with those in your shelf from there on out, which isn't a big deal because right now that's all I can get anyway. So let's look at this in dollars and cents. 500 wads cost me $15. That's roughly three cents per wad. That's not bad at all. Primers. For a thousand primers, I paid $75. That's seven and a half cents per primer. Powder. For one pound, I paid $40. I did the math if you use. 15 grains of powder, that's roughly 0.0343 ounces, and you would get about 450 loads out of one pound of powder. So this one pound of powder should be able to get me around 450 reloads in a 410 shot shell. That's based on loading data, anywhere from like 14 and a half to 16 grains of powder inside one of those shells. So again, that would give me roughly 450 loads out of that one bottle. And that comes to roughly 8.8 .8 cents per load for powder. Then the birdshot I have, I have a 20 pound bag of number six birdshot. I bought that a while ago when I was actually sticking it in the stock of my 308 Ruger American and my 450 Bushmaster Ruger American. So that I already had. That was $50 for 20 pounds. If I use a half ounce load in my 410 shells, that would give me roughly 640 loads. That would mean that's about 7.8 cents per load for the bird shot. Now, if I'm reloading per shell, if I add all this stuff up, 3 cents, 7.5 cents, 8.8 .8 cents, 0.78 cents, plus the cost of the hulls that I already have, reloading per shell is roughly 24 cents per shell. That's pretty crazy because when you're reloading, the primer goes in first, then you put powder in, then you push a wad in, and I'm oversimplifying this, then you pour your shot in, then you crimp the top of it. So you have your primer, your powder, your wad, your shot, and then you crimp the top or you can seal it with a shot card or with wax or something like that. And that comes to 24.4 cents per round every time I reload. Buying 410 shells in the store right now, they're between a dollar and a dollar twenty per round. Again, on occasion, Walmart has some in stock for about seventeen or eighteen dollars for twenty-five. They're usually three-inch shells. They won't work in some of my guns. Obviously, my um, my Smith and Wesson Governor or my um, I always forget what the heck it's called. My Bond Arms Derringer. Those two will only take two and a half inch shells. So. Even if I buy those shells at Walmart, they're, you know, 80, 85 cents around, 90 cents around, something like that. I can get them. I can shoot them out of my shotgun, my either my Mossberg 500 or out of my Savage 301. I can shoot it out of either of those. And then after I shoot them, I can trim the shell down to a two and a half inch shell and just either use a shot card on the top of it or I can uh, just fill it with wax. So I have the ability to load quite a bit of 410. Now, again, granted, I don't shoot 410 as much as I do other calibers, um, but for now, it's the only shell that I can reload. It's the only components I was able to find was for a 410. Um, as far as a reloading station for the 410, I'm actually going to make one. I've seen tons of videos online, people making their own, and I have some really good ideas on simple components that I have in my garage that I can repurpose to make a reloading station um, between old engine parts that I have for valves and things like that where I can use that to punch out the old primer or a place to put the round when I'm punching out the primer. Some big 5 8 diameter nuts that I can use um, using a quarter inch nut driver extension and a uh, I think it's a 5 30 seconds or a 6 30 seconds which would be uh, 1 16th inch Allen key that would go into that nut driver that would punch out the primers um, and then a, just a wooden dowel to compress the powder and to put the wad in and then you know for measuring my shot and things like that it's not a big deal it's a half an ounce of shot so 
actually building a reloading press or a reloading station for 410 is relatively simple. So in this ammo can here, I don't know how many 410 slugs I have in here, but I have a whole 10 of two and a half inch shell, one fifth ounce 410 slugs. And I have probably 50 rounds of Winchester AA 410, two and a half inch shot. Now, these ones, I think I spent, I don't know, 17, 17 or 18 bucks a box on that. And then these ones, I think I spent about the same 16 bucks a box. And some of these I've had for quite a while. These are really good slugs. They're like 1600 feet per second. They're really hot. Um, so I'm not going to be able to necessarily make slugs. But some of the other thing that's nice about this, again, if I go with a three inch shell and I cut the top off the shell because it's a little bit too long, you can actually get a little bit more volume out of a shell if you cut the crimp off the top and put wax in it. So what I'm thinking is um, not even, or sorry, not just the number six shot that I have, but also I may try reloading these with some steel BBs, like regular BB gun BBs because those you can get really cheap at Walmart, Cabela's, just about anywhere. They're a little bit bigger. Uh, they're smaller. They're like probably what would be a, I don't know, a number four or a number six buckshot, if that's even such a thing. Um, they're pretty small. They're 0.177 caliber. So they're, they're pretty small, but they're bigger than a number six shot. They're bigger than a, you know, a, a number five or a number four shot. So I may try using some copper coated BBs to reload some of these as well, which will give me a little bit of diversity in my shot. So even though I can't necessarily make slugs on my own, and again, I may buy a slug mold if I can find one and melt down some lead. I'll search for ranged lead and things like that and clean it up and melt it down. I have no opposition to doing that. It's just the more I can do to keep myself self-sufficient, the more I know how to do is only going to help me in the future. Um, I've also found a... 20 gauge mech 600 junior press actually my sporting club that i belong to my shooting range uh somebody donated one to the club and it's been sitting in a cabinet and i talked to the one of the club presidents and they said they would take it out they would give it a good clean and show it to me and if i want it they'd sell it to me for a good price so i didn't want to get into this spending like five six seven eight hundred dollars just to get started on this i had every intention of buying like a Lee load all two, which is about 55 bucks right now from midway for doing 12 gauge. And you can buy the chucks and everything for 20 gauge for another 28 bucks. So I would have been into that for about 85, $90 to be able to reload 12 and 20 gauge. But as it turns out, I mean, obviously a mech press is much better. They're much better made. They're made to last. They're made to use for a long time. So if I can get one of those in 20 gauge, I can keep my eye out, maybe find one in 12 gauge as well. But for now, getting started with 410, which is the most expensive shot shell, it has been for many years, and then getting started in 20 gauge, once I find some wads and some powder that I can source, I'll be doing pretty well. And then 12 gauges, again, I'll, I'll get to those, either I'll buy a second set of dies for the Mech 600 Junior so that I can do 12 and 20 gauge and just do a whole bunch of one, switch it over, do a whole bunch of the other one, or I'll just keep my eyes out for another... Um, 12 gauge reloader just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to set up a spot in my basement. I have a workstation in my basement that right now is a little bit messy because I do woodworking down there, but I'm going to clean it all up and set up a table with my presses on it so that I can do my reloading in the basement. Pretty sure my wife would not appreciate me loading gunpowder in my bedroom, even though I'm going to be really careful. I'm not going to spill it. I really don't want to have an issue with anything, um, especially I don't want to have an issue with my wife. Keep the wife happy. Keep your life happy. Although sometimes it's a little bit hard to do both, but so that's the decision I've made over the past couple of weeks, really actually over the last week, just with the prices skyrocketing on ammunition on, you know, shot shells. It's just, it's outrageous for one. You can't find them hardly ever. Even Walmart, who used to have them in stock all the time. You go in there now, you might find one or two boxes of target loads for 10 bucks a box. Then you go into Cabela's, they have cases of it right now. hundred round packs are $40. And a case is like between $120 and uh, $180, depending on what you're buying. So I have a really good stock of 20 and 12 gauge ammo already, but I'm going to start capturing all of my 12 and 20 gauge shells and saving them. And definitely my 410s because I can load 410 right now. So the next time I go to the range, I'll probably take out my Mossberg 500, my Stevens and my Smith & Wesson Governor. 
and put a couple hundred rounds of 410 down range and then come back and wipe the hulls out and start reloading because I am super excited about this. Can't wait to get started. So look forward to that on my channel. So for me, this is a bit of branching out. It's going a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but I've never shied away from a challenge. I really enjoy learning new things, especially things that I find useful. A lot of times the work I actually do for work doesn't always feel like it's rewarding to me. Um, I work in an office. I'm a marketing director and um, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but it's a good job. It's a good paycheck and it keeps me going with what I'm doing here. But like I said, I really like to find new hobbies or new skills that I can use in my everyday life that are going to make my life better. I know Matt from Demolition Ranch, he made a comment once that kind of stuck with me. Do something today that will make your life tomorrow a little bit easier. So getting ready to reload my own stuff, this will save me a lot of money and it'll give me something else to do, something fun to sit down and do. I can watch TV and watch videos while I'm doing this and uh, it's going to be another skill that I can use. So being able to reload my own ammo, being able to reload for other people if they want me to. Um, not that I'm going to do this as a service, but I do have a lot of friends that shoot as well. And I've let a few people know that I'm getting into reloading. So once I get my load data down and I can start to actually get my rounds tested and they function fine, I wouldn't have a problem reloading some stuff for some friends of mine or selling some of my reloaded shells in the case that they needed some. Um, makes it a lot easier. I don't have to worry about storing more ammo because shot shells take up a lot of room. They're heavy. Uh, so the less that I have to store, the more I can redo on my own good on me. And uh, you never know, maybe I'll get into reloading pistols. I've been saving all my 38, 357 brass, all my 450 Bushmaster brass, all of my 45 long Colt brass. So at some point I'm going to have to find a place in my house to store all that right now. It's just in, uh, in my closet in a big bag, which isn't a great place to keep it. Again, if my wife ever finds it, she's going to be like, what the heck is all this crap? So at any rate, thanks for watching another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. Please get out there and shoot. Make sure you support your two-way rights. God bless America. You remember, if somebody tells you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, you remind them that freedom is the greater good. And don't be afraid to try something new. Get out there. Try your own hand at reloading. Um, from what I'm told, reloading shotguns is very forgiving, and it's about the easiest way that you can learn how to reload. That's why I'm starting with it. I don't want to get into spending, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars on presses to do all my pistols and everything like that. I do shoot shotguns a fair amount when I go out and do trap or skeet or sporting clays. I'll go through 150, 200 rounds in an afternoon. And again, that would be $80 to go out and do that with 12 gauge or 20 gauge right now when I might be able to get away with reloading and spend $10 on all the components to redo all the shells in the future. So just something to think about. Thanks again for watching and have a great night.